Over the last 118 years, Harley-Davidson has created motorcycles that have traversed every landscape imaginable. Whether or not the motorcycle was specifically designed for that type of terrain, the riders have always adapted the motorcycles to suit what they needed it to do. Innovation, pushing the limits, and working with what you got was the catalyst in the early 1900s that took Harley riders in dirt, snow, gravel, and any other road condition that stood in their way. But modifications and improvising can only get you so far for so long. In the early 2000s, a new discipline of riding was emerging. The adventure rider was a new breed of motorcyclist. Born out of the desire to be able to ride on and off-road and cover transcontinental distances. The ADV or adventure touring motorcycle segment has become one of the fastest growing motorcycle disciplines in the world. On July 18th, 2018, Harley-Davidson announced that they'd be developing a new adventure touring motorcycle. This controversial announcement both divided Harley-Davidson's loyal following and ignited the skeptics. Would Harley-Davidson alienate a portion of their loyal riders? Would Harley-Davidson be able to build an adventure touring motorcycle that measured up in such a fiercely competitive space? This is my two-day extended test ride on the Harley-Davidson Pan America. Zakar was our home base for the weekend, aka the zombie apocalypse compound at Rawhide. Zakar is one of Rawhide's training facilities that they use to hone motorcyclists' ADV riding capabilities, and it doubles as a defense fortress against any impending zombie apocalypse outbreaks. A week and a half prior to arriving at Zakar, Andrew and I had the opportunity to head down to San Diego and ride the Pan America for the first time on road only. Zakar would be the first time that Andrew and I would be able to get a taste for what the Pan America was capable of in an on and off road environment. When we arrived, we were briefed on what the next two days would look like. Day one, we would be staying close to camp and practicing basic riding drills. We would be getting a good feel for the bike and doing things like braking hard, nice. doing tight zigzag formations through cones, and going through a few obstacle courses to getting us acclimated to the bike in different types of terrain. Day two would be going out for a longer ride, about 150 miles, and experiencing some of the local terrain in the Mojave Desert. Although day one got a little bit hot and tedious, it allowed us to push the limits of the bike in a controlled environment, so we really got a feel for exactly what the bike was capable of.
Day two turned out to be an epic ride where we were able to experience the Pan America to its full potential by riding it across the landscapes of Southern California's deserts in on and off-road terrain. So Andrew and I just got back from the Mojave Desert and we want to give you guys a recap on the Pan America, everything we experienced. Obviously we had the opportunity to take it in a lot of different types of terrain, up mountains, on road, off road. We had the opportunity to do some cool like brake checks and some suspension tests on the bike and everything. And so we want to run down really all the features of the bike with you guys and recap everything we experienced, the good, the bad, the ugly. So first off I thought we would start off with the Revolution Max 1250. So right out of the gates, first impressions, I think the first time we rode it was in San Diego. Yeah. Andrew and I went up a hill, like a pretty good incline together. Wah, right, revved it out, threw it in the third gear, revved it out, and that thing, the 150 horsepower, 94 foot-pounds of torque, red lines at 9,000 RPM, yeah. like that thing was a beast right out of the good. gate. So as soon as I cracked the throttle, I yelled in my helmet. It was just like, woo! Like I picked it up, the GoPro audio, yeah, by the way. It, did you really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you screamed like a schoolgirl. Oh. oh man, great, it, it, it's really that exciting. It genuinely just pulls every gear, that variable valve timing. Just when you think it's kind of plateaued and then it hits around that 6,000, 6,200 uh, range, it just starts pulling even more. It's crazy crazy engine it's great i love it just a few stats on the engine so 60 degree v twin liquid cooled dual overhead cam it's got variable valve timing in there like andrew mentions it can advance or retard the timing you know by 40 degrees you feel it uh, me personally because i really paid a lot of attention to that. I feel like when I grabbed a ton of throttle at the same time, like maybe half throttle or more, I could feel it could kick in like at about 4,000 RPM and you really felt the, the power band shift almost. But at the same time, if I was holding like a steady RPM at like 4,000 RPM or so, like I felt like it, you didn't, it wasn't really hunting or searching for the right timing. And so like I felt like I had that good low end torque still when we were in first gear and doing like the technical off-road stuff. It was real intuitive for the computer to really assess your throttle position. And if you're looking to go, that variable valve timing yeah. kicks in at the right time. And so I, I felt like the tuning and everything of it was really good. Yeah, and, and not to mention the ride modes that it has. So you can really tame that 150 horsepower in the dirt, on the road, and even you know, custom tuning to add your own uh, tune to it. So you can get into a map and then just put sport throttle with off-road mode, um, off-road plus mode. I mean, it's it's phenomenal, the, the rider aids to this thing, to really dial in the engine for your riding capabilities and just to, to suit you best is just amazing. All right, so day one, we're gearing up, starting the bikes. Gonna head out to California City. First time out on the dirt on the Pan America. Looking forward to this for a long time. Just learned how to pick up the bike. That was pretty cool. It's kind of fun seeing the Pan America on its side for the first time too. But yeah, we're gonna take off right now. The first day we're doing some training, some basic skills, things like that. The Revolution Max, I'm really excited to see the other bikes that Harley Davidson's gonna put this engine in as well um you know if i could take one thing out of the entire bike that i just feel like was the the shining star in the bike i'd probably say the engine like oh, the engine 100%. is really good and you combine that with the six-speed transmission you've got a, a cable clutch on it but the cable clutch was extremely smooth to Light. pull. it's even lighter than the soft tails i felt i would agree with you doing that little single track kind of putting around through the desert going off of the trail um but just two finger clutching it manipulating the throttle and just kind of hopping around is just amazing. Like, that's one thing I noticed right away in the dirt was how light the clutch is because they had us do a lot of slow maneuvering. And that's and when it's important because <clears> your <throat> hand gets fatigued. You're like yeah. constantly in the friction zone all the time. And not to mention, it's the first Harley that came with uh, adjustable levers from the factory. So, good point. Huge, yeah. Huge bonus on that. Yeah, so based on your hand size, you can adjust you know, where the, the lever is to really suit your hand size. Um, and hit that friction zone where you need it to be hit. Yeah, so the Revolution Max, definitely a, a huge thing. Um, and really the, the things that I wanted to focus most on in the Pan America was the suspension. 
the engine and the braking. Thank yeah. you. So let's talk about the brakes for a second. So you've got Brembo brakes, four piston calipers, mono block, radial mount calipers. Huge. If I had to pick a second thing, I so think the braking was brakes, phenomenal. I mean, the first thing you notice right away on any motorcycle, especially when you're test riding one that's purpose built and in its environment, is first off engine power, suspension, and then brakes. And when we did the test ride uh, on the street, I mean, you really feel the power, you know, but you can't really test out the suspension and braking a little bit, but the braking characteristics are obviously gonna be different from street application to dirt. Totally, so, I mean, ABS, we experienced yeah. the ABS oh, like 100%. almost constantly yeah. in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And that, that braking system, you know, by Brembo, is just absolutely phenomenal. In the dirt, on the pavement, I mean, you get a Brembo master cylinder paired with the Brembo calipers, which a lot of manufacturers out there generally use a Nissan or another manufacturer with a Brembo caliper just because, you know, they could say that has Brembo brakes. Yeah. But this thing from top to bottom is all Brembo, and it's it's not. It's mid inching sound on the parts no, with the 100%. braking system uh, at all. Before we move too far, I also want to mention, too, that the Revolution Max or the engine is a stressed member. Uh, of the motorcycle, meaning that there is no steel tubular frame like we normally see like on the touring bike or the soft tail. So you've got basically three subframes. You've got the front frame, you've got a mid and a tail section of, it's like a, a trellis style frame that bolts on to the actual engine. So that's important because it reduces weight. Uh, and speaking of weight, the Pan American Special that we rode is 559 pounds. For the segment, you know, lighter than some, it's kind of on par with the most. I think I, it was the appropriate thing to say. And so a lot of people thought that the Pan America was gonna come in super, super heavy and bloated, complete opposite. The bike was, was nimble. The other thing that's great about the engine being a stressed member is the fact that you have really good rigidity as well, which especially off-road, you've got enough motion and movement with the sand and things like that. The last thing you need is to also have flex in your frame. And so the whole chassis, super tight, you can definitely flick that thing around. You can ride it real aggressively and not feel like you have a flex anywhere in the frame. It just instills confidence, 100%. Yeah. With, with the, the braking and the suspension, the rigidity of the, of the frame or lack thereof, I mean, the overall chassis is just amazing. Um, I mean, first riding it on the street and then putting it in the dirt. I mean, we all had the, the, the we we're all kind of skeptics here about kind of what is Harley going to put out, you know, is, is it going to be bloated, like you had mentioned, is it going to be underpowered, is it going to be overpriced, it's what 99% of people think, and, and I'm guilty of it too, you know, I mean, I really wanted Harley, Harley to, to deliver, and 110% they delivered with this bike. bike is it's everything I expected it to be and then some it's awesome did you go off the trail Andrew I did I did go off the trail did you get in trouble I did he said don't do that no one ever said not to do it beforehand so I yeah. figured you know in the desert you're gonna be bopping around all this stuff and you know, try the bike out low speed tight stuff did very well you know all right so day two we're about ready to go out here in the Mojave Desert we got about a 130 mile ride, good combination of both highway and off-road stuff. And so we're just kind of making the last preparations here, all geared up here. We told Andrew he can't leave the pack like he did yesterday. He got, he got in trouble a little bit. I got separated. He got separated. <laughs> he got separated from the group. He got lost. I got lost. I had to navigate my way back through uh, through the desert that there was no trails. I had to bushwhack and blaze my own trail. Apparently can't do that on private property. <laughs> it can happen to anybody, right? Ride gas up here. Taking over the gas station.
let's talk about the suspension for a minute. So you've got about seven and a half inches in the front and the rear, which is about on par with most of the other, you know, major competitors in the market. Uh, Showa did the suspension, so inverted front end. You've got the remote reservoir piggyback shock in the tail end. Good stuff. Um, oh. and, and you combine that with the adjustability of it all. Um, the suspension was one of the most impressive things about this bike. You know, just yeah. taking it through the whoops, the thing floated right over the whoops. We had the opportunity on the first day to take it to the track, and <laughs> yeah. there's like that this was little, fun. yeah, little makeshift motocross track. We were actually able to jump it a little bit, and yeah, the suspension handled the weight, and you could ride the bike pretty aggressively. And it also has semi-active suspension as well on the special, where it actually adjusts to the load of the bike so your weight if you have a passenger or gear in the back it adjusts and a lot of that's accomplished through the adaptive ride height mechanism which lowers when you come to a stop and we'll touch on that a little bit more you combine the suspension the electronics that enhance that suspension and dude it was it was oh, awesome God. yeah <clears throat> at first you know glance and, and hearing of the adaptive ride height i thought it was like well is it going to be a little bit gimmicky you know is it yeah. something they can just say and it's on paper and it sounds really fancy and and whatever have you but when actually we test rode it out in san diego i actually had i rested my calf on the on the foot peg and drug my toes and as i was you know as you were riding coming to a stop i felt my toes and my foot making more contact with the ground so That's right. it's so cool because it, and that helps out too when you're in off camber stuff and you're parking you know you're, you're just throwing the kickstand down in, in the dirt and you go to get back on your bike and you're on a little incline when you turn on that bike that bike act, the bike actually sets a little bit so it, it lowers its height so it's easier to get on which is something yeah. i never really noticed until we were in the dirt <clears throat> awesome yeah so uh, it, it helps in more ways than you might think like myself i'm six foot six and so someone may argue well do you really need that and it's hard for me to notice that stuff which is part of the reason why andrew you know did those little tests with his feet to really feel it um, and I think the takeaway from that as well is that you don't really notice it dropping down. It's not like this big sudden like drop when you hit the stop. It's really gradual, and so it's, it's very natural. Yeah, it's it's very natural as it happens, and so the bike just comes down for you, so you can get your feet more firmly planted on the ground. For you know people that are, I would say anywhere between five ten and and shorter, you're gonna benefit from the yeah. that two inch drop for sure. You can even adjust how quick it adjusts that drop, which is really really rad you, i mean you can tell the bike to say you know a gradual drop as you slow down and come to a complete stop you won't notice it or you can have it do more kind of a drastic you know last drop minute quickly yeah, yeah so as you come to stop that's, yeah, that's a really rad. cool really cool thing that they did that is cool i'm glad you brought that up and that's all dialed into the different uh custom ride modes so you've got three custom ride modes on the special and you've got one on the pan america standard and in those those custom ride modes you can start with a stock map meaning like the road road map or the sport map or the off-road map and then you can adjust that mapping um, and tailor it to your needs and the the adaptive ride height is one of those metrics that you can adjust in there. So let's talk a little bit about you know, ride modes while we're on that topic. So this is the first vehicle I've ever ridden where you have to make a conscious decision as to what ride mode you're going to be in that's appropriate for the train that you're going to be riding on. So many times you have ride modes on motorcycles or cars. You know, I have cars that have ride or drive modes, I guess they call it. And I never really use them. I just have it in the same mode. I just, just like the normal mode. And I just go with that every time and then you just kind of forget about it. It's just like a, a sales gimmick. But the Pan America, I can say that you really got to make a conscious decision about what ride mode you're in because it really dictates how that bike is going to handle. And when you have two extremely you know, varying terrain situations off-road and on the pavement, you really got to dial up and pick the right ride mode for the type of terrain you're on. Uh, perfect example, Andrew was really good about really honing into this real accurately is when you're off-road, you got to be in off-road mode at a minimum. We preferred the off-road off plus, plus mode, yeah. which the off-road plus mode, you had to have the bike stopped on and then you, you hit the off-road plus mode. What, what was some of the other things like that so, you noticed about that? Um, yeah, off-road plus um, gives you a good throttle input. It's not as sensitive as sport mode and not as sluggish as rain mode. It's, it's a yeah. good off-road feeling. And uh, to be able to lock up that rear tire and still have front ABS is huge. And they that in, was huge. In uh, at Rawhide, they really had us <laughs> practice panic braking and really stopping and First feeling day. that ABS. I mean, as a dirt rider, everything you know about riding in the dirt, you don't want to grab a handful of front <laughs> brakes. Yeah. You know, I've had my fair share, and I've went over the bars, lost front end a million times, 
So you kind of learn how to work around that in the dirt and not trying to avoid the front brake as much as possible at any lean angle or, or you know, turn input. But here you can just grab a handful of that Brembo and that thing is stopping on a dime. It's gonna keep you upright. And then at the same time, you can pretty much stand on that brake pedal and it'll yeah. slide if you want it to. You know, it's just the way you can manipulate this 500 pound bike uh, with paired with these ride, you know, these rider aids, it's almost like cheating, man, like 100%. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah, um, I'm glad you brought that up too, because yeah, they, they made us kind of go against all of what we've been taught in our intuition of riding off-road, and, and they wanted us to lock up the front wheel on that bike with the ABS on. And again, we're in off-road mode, so the intervention is at the lowest uh, sensitivity, meaning that it, it will intervene the least. And so, yeah, we lock up that front end and it slipped it just enough where you weren't sli sliding and skidding and, and losing control, but you could still lock up the rear wheel, which was huge. A couple things too um, about the ride modes. So in off-road mode, if you give it just a ton of throttle all at once, it will gradually bring you that power on. I remember when we were pulling off the dirt road and onto the highway, I was still in off-road mode and I gave it a bunch of throttle to catch up to these guys. And the bike just like gradually was, was bringing on the power. I was like, what's going on here? And then I realized it's in the wrong mode. I changed the mode without really changing the throttle position. And once I changed it into sport mode, the bike just took oh, off. God. Yeah. Um, there was also another time where I was somehow in rain mode when I was off-road and the traction control is so sensitive I could like the wheel was hopping and losing traction so much that I was getting hardly any power to the rear wheel at all mm -hmm. um, And then I switched it into off-road mode and I was able to it reduce the intervention with the the traction control I was able to go again. That's really important to know what mode you're in and use your modes appropriately for the train you're in There were a couple times too where we were on these off-roads you know, going up the side of this this awesome hill, uh, Chimney Peak, I think is what it's called, and we got to like some of these washboard areas where the the rear wheel was bouncing a lot, and so I was constantly losing traction. And even in regular off road mode, my throttle was just really reduced. The power to the rear was reduced like heavily, more than I actually wanted to. I had to stop my bike going to off road plus mode, and then the traction control intervened a lot less, and really. I, I agree with Andrew where you're gonna wanna, and for a lot of like dirt ride, bike riders who are really used to riding in dirt, you're probably gonna wanna turn off traction control altogether when you're in, especially like sand and like technical dirt areas. Yeah, 100%, I mean, if you're in sand, you, you want, you know, that engine giving you all that torque, man. I mean, yeah. uh, was it 90 something foot pounds 94. of torque? 94 foot pounds of torque. I mean, me, I, I'm a little bit of a hooligan, so as soon as I got there, I turned off as many rider aids as I could I didn't want any of that you know and, and if I was able to lose uh, front ABS I probably would have turned it off but after riding with it and you know feeling how good it breaks with that front ABS I probably wouldn't even turn that off because it's nice to have it to keep you upright but touching back on that on that traction control like when the bike is when it's just you and the bike without any luggage track control off is probably the funnest mode but I see track control as like just using it in off-road plus where it's you know the least sensitive because when you got to think about when you're loaded down and you got you know 80 pounds of gear on the bike and then a backpack and a you know a, a, a camping tent and a sleeping bag and that bike's loaded down I think track control is a huge player especially because you're not going to be you know riding too crazy like we did without being loaded down with big bags yeah. and stuff so if you're by yourself out in Alaska track control can be huge just to keep you up there you know because when you're when you're drifting back and forth and you got all that weight and that rear end sliding around it's good to keep that that rear tire you know centered and and keep that traction in line man yeah especially at the end of the day we're like kind of like a wet road or something like mm -hmm. that i'm going to turn all the rider aids oh, yeah, on so i can just you know sometimes you're like your senses aren't there when you've been doing 500 miles in a day yeah. and it's raining and you just want to get there safely and so then, it's mm -hmm. nice to have the option yeah and then once you're in off-road plus mode uh, to engage it you had to be at a complete stop but to get out of off-road plus mode you can just do it on the fly yeah so, you can be going down the road at 40 and yeah you know, so the mode button yeah I'd hit the mode button be in sport mode once we're on the highway I played around in road mode too road mode is just this perfect because in sport mode we were doing those canyons coming down from Chimney Peak you know to have that real that touchy throttle and that real like snappy torque was yeah. awesome you know it'd be in mid third gear 
hovering around 4,500 RPM and just romping on it. And well, it changes the engine the, braking too. Yeah, like that's yeah, you one feel of the more things, of that drag. Yeah. yeah, one of the metrics in the customizable ride modes is you can change the engine braking. So you're riding yeah, real aggressively nice. coming down the sweeping turns, like you want that engine braking to be there. Yeah. And so sport mode, you know, gives it to you. So that was, that was really cool. Let's talk a little bit about the wheels too. So it's a no brainer that if you're gonna be riding this bike in any considerable amount of off-road, you're gonna want the special and you're gonna want the lace wheels. The lace wheels with the tires, now we rode with the Anarchy uh, oh, aggressive man. knobby tires that are a P&A option. Dude, freaking awesome tires off-road. 50-50% ratio of road and dirt and that thing hooked as much as you needed to and it was very predictable and that's one yeah. thing you want in a tire is predictability how it where it's its limit is in the dirt and on the terrain you're at because dirt always changes from sand and we did all types of, of yeah. terrain and then on the highway you're kind of expecting a rolling buzzing sound and I, yep. I, I did a, a little bit ex excessive in the in the speed uh, category there and it, and it felt solid it was planted you got your uh your PSI right there on the dash. Uh, another thing too, just kind of touching on the on the infotainment screen, uh, standing up, the ergon ergonomics of the bike is absolutely nuts. That's man. huge, and yeah, that's yeah. something we should definitely talk about. Like yeah. I, we rode in San Diego, we rode a lot of these bikes back to back, like the KTM, the Ducati, the BMW, and all of them are pretty good at standing up, but the Pan America is so inviting to just stand up straight up it's you can the, see the screen the ergonomics the are awesome oh. i love the shape of the tank too how mm -hmm. you can do like no matter what size you are your knees can just hug yeah. it and not to mention you can change the seat height just yeah. just yeah. right off the bat from the factory so you can go there's two a, notches yeah you set the seat a little higher and then um you can get a tall boy seat or or uh or reach seat so yeah. that that's huge man that's awesome yeah um yeah and just standing up just the pegs i had the two inch the plus two inch riser on my bike which is a parts and accessory option as well and me being the height i am that was a godsend for me uh, that helped out a lot did you feel like you needed to go higher on the bars or were the bars good what, no how tall are you i'm 5'11 on a good day so and you I, felt comfortable standing perfect. up on a stock stock bike America, uh, i'm not sure where the seat was i think it might have been in the higher setting that's, um, a, that's one inch right there. So you yeah. can go a high notch or the low notch on the seat. Mm -hmm. That's just like a mechanical notch on the yeah. the frame of the bike. Yeah, and that, I, I felt perfect, man, because uh, day one, we're doing a lot of that slow speed stuff. So standing up and being able to manip manipulate the clutch and throttle input and everything and be able to look down and see the screen. You know, because yeah. a lot of the time when you're, when you're on the highway or going through the dirt, you're standing up, especially in the dirt, you're standing up 80, 90% of the time. Yeah. And, and to be able to look down, look at the screen, see what mode you're in, see what gear you're in, see what RPM you're sitting at, your gas, you know, all that. So, yeah, it's huge. So I felt comfortable standing up on the highway doing 80, 90 miles an hour as well. Oh, 100%. And usually I'm just, I don't have like the right footing where I feel like I can fight the wind as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I felt super comfortable on the pegs on the Pan America. So that's one thing that I just felt like. The, the Harley really shines. You know, if I could say there was a close second, it would be the BMW. The BMW, I'm really comfortable standing up as well. Mm -hmm. The Ducati was by far the worst. The uh, Ducati was just, you, uh, I didn't like Standing it. up was <laughs> tough. Your heel would my hit the exhaust. Yeah. I, and I only have a, size, uh, I have a size 12 foot. So my heel was sitting on the exhaust. The, the tank just didn't ergonomically fit right. I felt like I was hunched a little bit. Yeah. And, and that was the slowest one out of all of them. I, I didn't expect that. The KTM yeah. was obviously nuts ktm was yeah. the fastest it was, it was I, faster than the harley the harley was second mm -hmm. and i felt the ktm was just too fast for its own good that thing every time you shift gears it feels like the wheel's non-existent i mean <laughs> don't get me wrong it's a absolutely fun engine i've yeah. owned it in the in the super duke in the 1290 it's a fun bike but overall the pan america was awesome windscreen adjustment you can go up and down really worked well for me i mean one of my tests is i, I opened my visor when we we're on the highway doing 80 90 miles an hour I have it in the highest setting, you use it with one hand, you pop it all the way up. I put my visor up and you know, I can I'm not getting blasted straight in the eyes. And you know, I can crack my head over the over the line of the, the windscreen and you know you can feel it. So that's one thing I kinda look out for. I'm, I'm glad you really tested. Well. Yeah, I'm glad yeah. you tested that. Um, I had a little bit different experience and I don't know if my bike was a little bit dirty or what, but I just had that's one of my complaints uh, is the windshield. I feel like the windshield, the mounting and everything on it was a little bit flimsy. I feel like Harley Davidson's all about quality and usually their stuff is really good, but I felt like using that 
joint, the, the lever to adjust the windshield. You have four different adjustability heights of the windshield. And I think I believe it's like 1.8 inches range of motion. I couldn't do it on the fly. I had to use two hands and you can't really use two hands out on the road. And so that was one of my things that I just felt like could have been improved a little bit with the Pan America. That, as long as we're talking about like uh, touch areas, I feel like the switch housings, um, and I think you had this issue as well, when we were, the cruise control worked great, but I just feel like there was absolutely no uh, feedback when you push the button and like engage the cruise control. Oh, I that? couldn't tell if I was pushing it. And the turn signals the too. Turn signal I couldn't really tell like, okay, oh. am, am I engaging the turn signal or not? Like there was no like distinct click there. There was no tactile feel of cancellation. Right. right. You know, I'd push in, like a lot of metric bikes I've owned, like, you know, the Yamahas and stuff like that, it's left push in to cancel and if you feel it especially with gloves you, feel you know quick, you canceled you get it the feedback this yeah. one here it, it, it's it's so shallow you don't know if you canceled it i didn't really like where the cruise control was i don't you know it was yeah. up on top yeah and then you got the little lever the activate button and then up on top which takes your your thumb completely off the thing or maybe i should have been using my index yeah. um but I'm, i just kind of like having it down low maybe i'm just used to the touring bikes and where it is up and yeah. down right there another little small gripe i had was uh the heated grips how the wiring there's actual physical wire coming out of the grip and going back into the housing fit and finish thing that at, we're not used to seeing in a harley exactly and at first glance i'm like why is this wire coming out and um, yeah, that, yeah that never really bothered me mm -hmm. um but i can see why it would bother you because we're not used to seeing a wire coming out of the grip yeah. and going back into the handlebar or whatever. Um, so yeah, duly noted. And these are pre-production bikes, we're mm -hmm. told. And so maybe the, the switches and everything will have a little bit better fit and finish. But I feel like the fit and finish on the bikes that we rode wasn't the great on the switches. Of course, we're spoiled with the Harley-Davidson metal switch housings yeah. and the, the switches that are real big and they have a very tactile feel to them. And so. It wasn't what we're used to in a Harley Davidson. Um, hopefully it's, it's better when the final product comes out. here in Jawbone. So we're on a, it's pretty much like a Jeep access trail right now. And uh, yeah, it's not too technical, but it's nice to be able to, you know, feel the, the bike and how the traction control works in the, in the dirt. So we're riding pretty much, I'm riding pretty much off-road mode right now. And if you really gun it in the dirt, you can feel the, if you gun it, you can feel the power of the engine come on real gradually so that you don't slip the wheel a whole bunch. But beautiful out here. Tons of Joshua trees and stuff. Jawbone, California is where we're at. But yeah, we took the highway in here. Uh, the bike, I think this has been said several times, but the bike has crazy amounts of power. I mean, it, it, you could never transfer all the power to the dirt. As with most of these 1200, 12, yeah, 1250 or 1200 cc bikes, you can never transfer all the power out on the on the dirt. So it's nice to have it out on the road, though. That's for sure. I mean, these things get up and go. A seasoned adventure rider once told me an adventure bike is a motorcycle that can be ridden out of your garage, travel a thousand miles on the highway to get to the dirt, travel a thousand miles on dirt, then turn around and park in your garage again.
when we're on the highway and cruising at 80, I think uh, I was in fifth most of the time because I kind of like hearing the engine. It has a certain tone at the higher RPMs that kind of, you know, it, it, it sings to me. It, it, uh, you talked about that a couple times, yeah. like the engine note. Yeah, I've, it, I've got some decent uh, audio, mm-hmm. so hopefully you guys can hear it. Yeah, but yeah. You, you, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, people like the character of a Harley Davidson. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that like, you just feel like, oh, I'm on this like raw, like monstrous piece of machinery that's breathing fire underneath me. And yeah. the the Pan America definitely doesn't have the V-twin air-cooled feel, but it has its own like off-road rugged yeah. exhaust note to it. And so oh, yeah. I felt like Harley hit on the head with the exhaust note as oh, well. 100%. Yeah, yeah, we were, Andrew and I were on the highway and we were doing some pulls against each other. We'd go down to about 40 miles an hour and take it up to uh, I can't remember it's not high or like 65 yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyways uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah like <laughs> the thing is so much I mean the engine just pulls so hard it's so much fun okay. I found myself hitting red line real quick because I'm obviously used to riding the Harleys and this thing you know it's like a sport it bike where you got to shift the gears quickly because yeah. you get you get through that range of RPM real quickly and I was kind of playing around with that you know being yeah. in third gear second gear and just being you know high mid to high RPMs and and feeling kind of just connecting with the engine and feeling when it really wakes up yeah. And then when it really, really wakes up, you know, that when, when you feel the, the VVT kick in and then it, and you just feel that extra pull, kind of kind of like yeah. VTEC for the car guys, yeah. you know what I mean? It, yeah, I love you that. You feel that, that, that pull, you, you feel the initial, like, that initial torque, that, that jump back, and then, you know, you're, you start climbing through the RPMs, you're wide open throttle, all your senses are activated, and then it hits that little... It, Let's it go advances, mode. All the, oh, the timing advances so and everything. Exciting. Yeah. I love it. I love that that feeling, feeling that 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 it can give you man so that engine's is wild let's talk for a sec too a little bit about uh lighting we haven't really talked much about lighting so and, and the, the overall style of the bike so personally just starting off with the style i absolutely love the style of the pan america one of the big things uh, that's made me kind of shy away from adventure touring bikes in the past is I just I love the style of Harley Davidson so much that I've never really liked that alien-ish insectoid uh, form of of a style or look design in some of these other adventure touring bikes. I don't think it's bad necessarily. It's just not my taste. Um, and the fact that the Harley Davidson went such a different direction with the style of the Pan America and made it this like American like off-road Jeep slash international Scout like tough-looking off-road vehicle. Like that style like really appealed to me a lot. Um, I don't think you're ever gonna be able to beat a big twin Harley Davidson just in the beauty of a Harley. But for an adventure touring bike, I love the look of the Pan America. Uh, it, uh, they nailed it on the style. And it's like that bar lighting in the front, yeah. which is was really good by the way. I like the, the flat line from like the headlight through the gas tank right above the engine. Yeah. And uh, Harley's focal point is the engine yeah. and it is, absolutely gorgeous man i mean you have harley davids right there the bar and shield you just know it's a harley when you see it from the the pretty side of the bike you know so and the way that the exhaust is you know comes out from the header down and it you know sweeps back you know it's 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 unmistakable amongst the bmw and the ktm because personally i think all adventure bikes are hideous i don't think they are beautiful at all you you don't buy them to go up to a bike night on them yeah and then seeing the the P and A stuff that's coming out for it is just premium. It's Harley Davidson. You yeah, know? you it's, got those auxiliary lights, which oh we actually man. have the auxiliary lights demoed to us, mm-hmm. um, and it's a light that you can turn on like an off road mode that's actually so bright that it's illegal on the road. <laughs> super bright which would be awesome just to light up the dark desert floor at night yeah but you've got seats you've got those tires we talked about which if you're going to do 50 percent off-road i say the the tires slam the, dunk yeah, no brainer Mich- michelin anarchy tires man they're yeah absolutely great tires. you've got uh the, and they're tubeless too so. yeah tubeless too that's mm-hmm. a good point you can fix it it's got a center stand as well mm-hmm. the special has a center stand the standard does not have a center stand so one more thing why you want to buy the special if you're doing off-roading but it's got the aluminum side cases on there as a parts and accessory option there's actually three different cases you can get you can get like these regular like sport touring cases on there the aluminum cases and you also get like these soft bag uh, side bags as well which mount on the same system too as well 
Yeah, all mounted on the same system. Yeah, you've got different windshields already. You've got a screaming eagle muffler. You've got muffler guards. Protection yeah. is is huge, especially if you if you are taking this big pig out in the dirt. Is is you're gonna drop it. I don't care how good you are. Yeah. You know, you just you just gonna have those days where you you slip up and you're gonna drop this bike. And when it hits the ground, it hits pretty hard, depending on how fast you go. But it's nice to know that this stuff is all protected. We had a couple opportunities where the instructors at this rawhide course had us tip over the bike and there were plenty of guys that dropped the bike as well. The bike did pretty well getting dropped. Like, oh, yeah. like there was plenty of guys that dropped the bikes and it wasn't mm -hmm. like bad drops. They weren't going very fast, but mm -hmm. nothing on the bike broke or yeah. rendered the bike uh, unrideable or anything yeah. like that. It was kind of a drop and pick it up and keep, keep going again. So probably put a lot of thought into designing, you know, all the guards on the bike. Our bikes also had the skid plates on it as well, mm -hmm. which yeah. if you're gonna do a lot of off-road riding, you gotta have that, that heavy duty skid plate and you gotta yeah. have the radiator guard as well. I know there's gonna be a lot of guys that buy these bikes and just ride them on road, which it's a ton of fun to ride just on road exclusively but i think most people are going to ride them you know on, on the big wide jeep trails which for those of you who who aren't really familiar with the adventure touring space i i would say personally i'll, I'll be curious to hear your opinion andrew if you're going to get one of these bikes and you're like a hardcore like dirt bike rider if you're doing a lot of like the steep single track stuff this isn't the bike for that type of stuff this bike is going to be and, and this can be said for all the adventure touring bikes that are you know 500 pounds plus you're going to want to do like wider roads stuff that isn't too technical stuff that isn't too steep we went on a lot of like jeep roads like stuff where the jeeps could go as well and it was great for that type of stuff there's a lot of roads in the united states that are exactly that jeep roads fire access roads things like that and i still felt like hey i'm off road this is challenging because i like to be challenged on on the bike well even but, taking it on that little hoonigan dirt bike track i mean that's yeah. something i wouldn't normally do on a bike that is that size but being out there and getting used to the bike it was it definitely handled it really well but kind of touching on your point after going to, to rawhide and then then giving you the tricks of the trade and and teaching you how to really maneuver a, a giant pig in the dirt was is really beneficial and you know they really got me going on uh doing the continental divide from new mexico to canada that's <laughs> that's something that that just added to my bucket list yeah and so and that's andrew nice bucket list trip dude doing the oh, continental man. divide from new mexico all the way up to canada border yeah, That'd so be epic. these wider Jeep trails are just as fun. You're getting just as far out as you want to be, and and even then, it you know kind of spiders off from you you're know still, different yeah, trails. You're so. still accessing roads that you'd never be able to do on a Harley 100%. Davidson. I mean, the stuff yeah. we did on the Pan America, you could never do it on a Harley Davidson, no. uh, never. And so you're still opening up a ton of new terrain for you on on the Pan America. Again, if you're looking to do these really tight, narrow, steep. Uh, maybe super sandy uh, hills and things and you want yeah, light st stick to your dirt bike yeah. the adventure bike is a bike that no load in your bike into the back of a trailer or a yeah. truck driving out there it's like you're having fun on the bike right away and that's something that i'm really looking forward to another thing too is kind of when you consider adventure bike is kind of what adventure are you going to do because these bigger adventure bikes like the pan america the ktm 1290 adventure the bmw so on and so forth these are also really good bikes on the road so it's yeah. it's getting out there doing you know 48 states and then the occasional dirt road like when i went up north and you know we're on the road glides and the touring bikes we'd go through a long stretch of road and see a dirt road off in the distance and yeah. you know i don't think you're a man when you stop and you go man i wish you know you wonder where that road yeah. goes you know or and, that and, would leave. well yeah. we'll never know we yeah keep going. exactly <laughs> i'm on a big twin you know so i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna hit the next bar in the next town you know right. but when you're on this pan america you see that dirt road and you're like a thousand it. miles away Let's from home it. you did 600 miles on the road let's you know do 30 miles on this dirt road see where it goes yeah. so call me biased but the, this thing is it's is, the full package it's and the it, package and, and the backing you get in north america or you know you dude, go it's adventure you know. touring you've got so many dealers <laughs> yeah. in in the united states that you're out on the road like you're never going to be more than you know a few miles mm -hmm. from any dealer at any point in time you know so you know you've got that network there to Beach. service or tires or whatever you know but i, I think too the takeaway here is you know, a lot of people thought that, okay, Harley's going to try it. They're going to miss the boat on a lot of significant things, whether it be the weight or the power or whatever. But after really riding this thing hard and putting it through the test and riding, I mean, we rode the bike to a lot of its limits, you know, speed and braking. And we took the suspension through a lot of stuff. We took it off a couple of jumps and stuff. And 
I can honestly say that this thing is, it's going to disrupt the adventure touring oh, world for sure. 100%. For sure. No I am question. so curious to see what the motorcycle journalists out there have anything negative to say about it. I mean, I'm curious because. Yeah, I'm curious too. You know, I had my nitpicky things. Uh, and we, again, we, I'm had not, to, we had to stretch for those things as it, well. Exactly. Like, it's like, what do you hate about it? Well, I feel like the, the front um, windscreen can be a little thicker, but that's just, that's digging for it. The I big was, stuff that matters, like Harley, like nailed it. Yeah. They didn't just like kind of get there in the ballpark they, they nailed it i mean so. going and i was an ace air i i told matt 100 percent like i i don't know if I, harley's gonna be able to do it yeah you know, yeah i, I really want harley to nail it yeah. i want it to be a great them. engine yeah, yeah i want it to happen are they gonna do it uh, maybe we'll maybe they will but it'll be you know 50 grand you know who knows right. and then when or it came heavy. out yeah or heavy or not or enough whatever. power, or right. they just they, they got the the idea right, but the execution not quite there. Right. Completely nailed on the head. Very rarely is Harley Davidson the one playing catch up, but in the adventure touring space, I'd classify them as the current underdog, and I think we're about to see a big upset. Call me biased, but I think Harley Davidson is poised to disrupt the adventure touring motorcycle world forever.